In this video, we shall see the Miller's theorem and uh, frequency response of CS amplifier. So, this is CS amplifier with MOSFET capacitance. As you can see, this is a CS amplifier uh, with input voltage, and we have a uh, R source that is source impedance of uh, this particular source, and we have a coupling capacitor R1, R2 is for biasing the uh, MOSFET, and uh, RD is the load resistor here and uh, you can see now this is uh, a capacitance which is representing between a gate and the drain which we call it as CGD and there is a capacitance between gate and the source it is uh, written as CGS now let us have a look at uh, the MOSFET capacitance here now this is a cross section view of the MOSFET as you can see this is the source terminal this is the uh, drain structure this is the gate so you can see I have uh, uh, I have made this source slightly penetrated beneath the uh, gate structure and as well as uh, beneath the uh, drain structure. So this is due to um, this overlap region is due to the lateral diffusion during the process of uh, having this n plus n plus for the drain and the source. So this due to this uh, lateral diffusion, we end up with a, a overlap capacitance between the gate and the source and gate and the drain. So, which will be represented in the model file of LT Spice as uh, CGSO. So, this uh, CGS stands for the capacitance between gate and the source. O stands for uh, the capac the overlap capacitance, as you can see here. And uh, along with those two uh, oxide capacitance, now this uh, CGSO and CGDO are due to the oxide metal oxide. Sorry, the gate oxide between uh, the gate terminal and the substrate here and uh, we'll also have uh, two more capacitances so namely uh, just namely we're going to have a junction capacitance between uh, this source and the substrate so which is a p p type p type uh, substrate and the n type uh, source similarly we're going to have a capacitance between uh, this uh, drain and the uh, substrate so this is the pn junction pn junction will end up with a uh, junction capacitance cj cj here so compared to this uh, overlap capacitance, this CJ is uh, uh, very minimal. So in the analysis of this LT spice, in the initial analysis, we will not be considering this junction capacitance. We will only deal with this uh, oxide capacitance, which is the overlap capacitance between the gate and the source and the gate and the drain. So let us uh, just go back and see. Uh, we had a circuit. Uh, CS amplifier is got uh, these MOSFET capacitances. When we have a MOSFET capacitance which is now floating now, so you can see this CGD is neither connected, to, neither of its terminals are connected to ground. So this is a floating capacitance, so which need to be, uh, which is now again between the input and the output terminal. So this has to be carefully analyzed before we proceed with the frequency response. So when, whenever we have any such capacitance which is floating and it is between input and output, so we are supposed to use uh, a theorem called as a, a Miller's theorem to analyze such circuit. Now this is a Miller's theorem. Let us uh, see the theory behind it. So let us consider uh, a, a generalized network. So it is a node number one and node number two. With respect to ground, let us assume that the voltage is V1 here. The voltage of node two is V2. And we'll assume that uh, currents that are entering the node one is one I1, I2, I3. The current that is leaving is IF. The same IF flows through this uh, uh, impedance which is now between the node 1 and 2. Now this F is written because it is the representation of a, a floating uh, impedance. Now this is a floating impedance ZF. So the same current IF flows here and this IF is equal to I4 plus I5 plus I6. Now I4, I5, I6 are the currents leaving this junction. So writing the KCL at node number uh, 1 and 2 we can write certainly this as uh, i1 plus i2 plus i3 is equal to if and similarly in the second node it is i4 plus i5 plus i6 is equal to if so let us try to uh, get an expression for if here so as we know that the current is going from v1 to uh, from potential v1 to uh, v2 so with the impedance of zf so if can be written by the expression v1 minus uh, v2 by zf this is equation 1 so let us try to see how do we represent this ZF which is floating, uh, which is now connected between uh, the node 1 and 2. So it can be now represented by ZD and ZP. 
now this zf which is floating now will be represented by z a and z b which is now uh, grounded one of its point is uh, grounded now so this circuit is exactly equal to this circuit provided this i a the current that is flowing through z a is equal to i f and uh, the current that is flowing through this i b should be equal to minus of i f so that's what we are trying to do here so just just have a look at uh, this now this is i f is equal to uh, i a is equal to i f and i b is equal to minus of uh, i f so i a is given by the expression so it is voltage across the node one which is v1 by the impedance is z a similarly the current that is i b is now given by so it is uh, v2 minus 0 by uh, z b so that's why it is v2 minus 0 by z b so 0 is not written here so i1 is uh, v1 by z a and uh, sorry this is i b is given by v1 by uh, z a and i b is given by v2 by z a so let us try to equate this uh, to the current i f and try to get the expression for z a and z b so this is what is uh, uh, we are just recalling from the previous slide so i a is equal to i f and uh, i b is equal to minus i f so so by writing what is uh, i a and i f so upon solving we can see we will get the expression for because this is a simple math so all of you can easily do it so as we can see now the expression for z a happens to be z f divided by 1 minus a v so this a v is nothing but uh, it, it is the ratio of uh, v2 by v1 so we will simply assume that uh, this is the output and this is the input so output by input happens to be the voltage gain so that's what is represented here so v2 minus v1 is simply written as av so the impedance uh, this za which is uh, the representation of this zf uh, by represent by taking out this floating by a grounded impedance so this za is now rep can be represented as zf by 1 minus av similarly uh, by equating this ib is equal to minus if we will get the expression for zb as zf uh, divided by 1 minus 1 over av so we will just take uh, uh, let us consider the exact circuit now instead of uh, zf let us take a resistor uh, rf here so let me just go back to that circuit and try to analyze suppose if it is um, rf so now it will be represented as r1 at uh, node v1 and uh, r2 by node r2 at node v2 so r1 can be represented as uh, uh, z rf now instead of zf we have rf rf divided by 1 minus av sorry so we'll also see what is r2 represented by now r2 is now represented by rf by 1 minus 1 over av so this is when uh, the impedance is replaced by a resistor rf now we shall also consider a case where if there is a capacitance which is floating then how do we represent it by using the Miller's theorem now this capacitor CF which is there between node 1 V1 and V2 node 1 and 2 having voltage V1 V2 can be represented by C1 and C2 so you can see now this is uh, uh, the impedance of uh, uh, C1 and impedance of C2 you can see now this is impedance of uh, C1 so z of c1 is given by z of cf divided by 1 minus av we know that uh, the impedance of a capacitance is 1 over 2 pi f into c1 so i'm just taking this z in terms of uh, uh, z c1 in terms of uh, uh, c1 now this is 1 over 2 pi c1 and uh, z cf let me represent as 1 over 2 pi f into cf so upon solving this we'll get the expression for this c1 in terms of cf as c1 is equal to cf into 1 minus av and uh, similarly solving for uh, uh, c2 here so we can get the expression for c2 as equal to cf into 1 minus av so meaning if we have a capacitance which is floating here can be represented by uh, capacitors on either side of uh, the node so c1 by the capacitance of this floating capacitance multiplied by 1 minus av on the other node it will be represented as cf into 1 minus 1 over av so let us uh, consider the same circuit over here so we have uh, the cs amplifier with this uh, capacitance cgd and the cgs i can say i'm writing the ac small signal model over here 
now you can see uh, this is uh, just put a star over here so this is just to indicate that we're not neglecting the capacitance here so in the previous cases so while writing the ac small signal model we have uh, neglected the capacitance meaning uh, we have replaced the capacitor by the short circuit and uh, replaced the dc source by the ground but in this case of uh, ac small signal analysis for the frequency response so we have to consider the effect of capacitance so that's why we are retaining the capacitance uh, in the in their position in the circuit so let me replace the so let me uh, replace this uh, voltage source by the ground so let me retain this capacitor as it is now this r1 r2 will come in parallel as it is shown here so there's a capacitance between gate and the source which is cgs you can see now this is cgs and there's a capacitance cgd between gate and the drain so it is worthy to observe here there's a capacitance which is cgd which is floating now so this is a floating capacitance which has to be uh, represented on either side of uh, this uh, input and output that is i should represent uh, it on the gate side and on the drain side using the miller's theorem concept so this is your uh, rd so let me just see okay, how does uh, the small signal model will look like upon replacing this uh, cgd by its uh, equivalent uh, capacitance on either side of the node using the miller's theorem so this is how it is done now so this is a small signal equivalent circuit uh, by replacing this the capacitance between CGD by C1 and C2. So as you can see now C1 is the capacitance uh, which is the replacement of the CGD. Now C1 is given by CGD multiplied by 1 minus AV. Now since uh, this AV is nothing but the voltage gain of this amplifier. So we know that the voltage gain of the amplifier is minus GM into RD. So this C1 happens to be CGD multiplied by 1 plus AV. So we are supposed to substitute the magnitude of uh, this uh, AV if, if the gain is 5. Now C1 is equal to CGD into 1 plus 5. So similarly what is C2? So we saw in the previous slides. So C2 was given by uh, CF into 1 minus 1 over AV. Now why it is becoming plus is because our magnitude or uh, the GM is sorry the AV is minus GM into RD. Since it is minus here minus into minus will become plus. In the same lines the C2 is now CGD into uh, 1 plus 1 over AV. So this way we can represent uh, the CGD which was there between the gate and the drain which is the input and the output by C1 and C2 on the nodes gate and the drain. Now as we can see here there are two capacitances. Uh, of course you may have also notice that the register which were there R1 parallel R2 now is being represented by now these two resistors which are R1 and R2 which are parallel is being represented by a single resistor which is R1 parallel R2 named as Rin. So this is Rin and you can see now this C1 and CGS are in parallel. Now it is also represented by a single capacitance which is Cin. Cin is nothing but CGS plus uh, C1 where C1 is given by CGD into 1 plus uh, uh, magnitude of AV. Uh, what is the C2? C2 is nothing but uh, CGD into 1 plus 1 over AV. Now let us uh, uh, rewrite this uh, small signal model at low frequencies how it looks like and uh, at uh, high frequency how does the equivalent circuit look like. Now we know that uh, this is the uh, circuit diagram of the small signal model for any frequencies. If you consider only the low frequency, uh, the capacitance of the coupling capacitors is far far greater than the source capacitance as, as we can just have a look at here. So at low frequencies all the capacitance will have large impedance. So compared to this R source, this CC has got very large, uh, very large impedance. So we will neglect uh, this R source and similarly compared to this uh, uh, R in C in is also very large so we will neglect the value of this C in so we will neglect the value of C C also because the reactance offered by these capacitors are very large so I am neglecting R source compared to C C and I am neglecting C in compared to uh, R in because when we have something in series uh, we are supposed to consider only a larger impedance compared to smaller one so when they are in parallel we are supposed to consider uh, a smaller one neglecting the larger impedance. So that's what is the representation here. So CC is far far greater than R, R source. C in is far far greater than R in. 
so this is so and so so this is the uh, neglecting this and this we end up with this as the equivalent circuit